Okay, welcome back. So we're going to get started here and we're going to go to our navigate to our same folder, this number one folder we've been using. And so what we're going to do today, we've got all our folders here. And last time uh, we did exposure fusion, today we're going to do tone mapping. Exposure fusion is kind of the LDR, or low dynamic range version, whereas the tone mapping uh, is referred to, of course, as the HDR. So we're going to go to our stitched folder here, and we can see all of our uh, blend planes here. We have nine exposures that we did in our bracket. And uh, this is the preview image here that we got out of PT GUI. And we're not going to use that one, and uh, so I just want to point that out that you, you kind of need to pull this image. This is the, the blended image here from PT GUI. That's just a preview that I like to, to use, um, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use these other nine images here. So we'll go ahead and select these. And then we're just going to drag these again into Photomatics Pro. This is going to be very similar to the Exposure Fusion uh, video, but um, we're doing tone mapping this time. So we are going to leave these same options checked here, reduce noise, reduce chromatic ab aberrations. And we'll pause this for a second. And there's our image. So I'm going to start off again by moving our presets bar over here all the way to my right and we'll go ahead and resize this and make this a little bigger so we can kind of see the image a little better. It's uh, refreshing there. There we go. So the last time we did exposure fusion here on the left side and we're going to do tone mapping this, side, this time so we're going to check the tone mapping there and I'm going to go to presets and try to find a, a preset that's closest to what I like. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my own presets here that I've created and we'll try uh, this this one to start and I'm not crazy about the way that looks uh, not really the look I'm going for so I'm gonna try one of these darker ones over here um, and that's a little better this light has some funky colors going on um, let's try this one that's a little better the light looks a little better there uh, it's dark you know it's a bar image so that's what we're going for so I'm gonna go ahead and go go with that and get started here I like to start with the black point it, it's not mandatory it's just something that that I do by by preference I guess um, so I'm gonna move that about to 0.25 which is kinda of what I always do and I'm gonna increase the strength I, I like to start with the strength a little higher you can always of course lower that later um, so Let's go ahead and looking at these colors, it looks like we could bump our colors, so I'm going to bring the color saturation up quite a bit, and I'm just going to kind of guess at where I think uh, where I think I'd like it, and then wait for that image to refresh over there. We'll bump it up even a little bit more, and you got to watch just watch the different elements like the light and the different elements in the image to make sure you're not oversaturating. Uh, that's certainly possible. So I'm going to actually going to back it off a little bit. I think 60 is probably a little low. I'm going to go about 65, I think. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and play with the luminosity a little bit here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, they did rename some of the options in a previous version of um, Photomatics, and it's much more self-explanatory now. Um, I'm going to move about 5 and see what that does. In fact, I'm going to go all the way to 8. And we'll take a look at that, and you can see uh, by increasing the luminosity in such a dark image, of course, we're going to gain more detail. So we'll move on to the detail contrast and give you an idea what it's going to do. I like to go to both extremes to kind of see what it's what it's doing, and then from there I can kind of gather whether uh, which way I want to go on some of these settings. So you'll see me do that quite a bit. The smooth highlights here. Um, we're going to go ahead and check this out and basically um, you know this I, I don't think this is going to be too relevant for this particular image uh, I tend to use this more in the outdoor images and one of the things it'll do is that sometimes you can get a nasty side effects um, like a gray sky for example um, and smoothing highlights is really effective for that and taking out the gray and different things reducing noise in the sky and that type of thing so there's the white Point. By moving the white point up, obviously we wash it out, move it back, and we get that dark image uh, again, which is kind of what we're going for. So I'm just going to move this up just a little bit to about one, or point one, excuse me. And that looks about right. Let's see. There we go. So about one, one point. 0.16 I think is about where we're going to leave that and that number is not necessarily going to apply to you you're going to have to find your own settings so the black point we go all the way obviously we lose some detail in the shadows and whatnot so I'm going to bring this back uh, kind of about where we had it 
see what this does for our image and that's about where I wanted that so the temperature uh, the temperature of course you gotta be real careful I, I just went to the extreme here and obviously this is way too warm and turning our blues purple and whatnot so I'm gonna go to the other extreme and this is obviously way too cool uh, just way too much blue obviously so I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull this temperature back uh, a little closer to center because it, it looked pretty good I might move it just a little bit let that refresh take a look at the colors there and I think I'm gonna leave that so we'll go to uh, on to the micro smoothing and the micro smoothing um, can really kinda of smooth things out for you but you gotta I guess one of the things I'm gonna warn you is you gotta be careful with this particular uh, setting while it can clean things up and um, if you overdo it it's it, it's well it's gonna have a real soft look um, or too smooth I guess I would say so you, you do wanna kinda of be careful with this particular setting um, I, I like the effect it's having but I definitely don't want to overdo it so I'm gonna shoot for a little less than half is what I'm going for here and see how that affects it and that's pretty good so we'll move on to the saturation highlights obviously that's too oversaturated we go the opposite way and we end up almost with a black and white for our, our uh, highlights so I'm gonna move this over and probably go let's see yeah I'm probably I think we'll go on to uh, the shadows here so the shadows nine and that brought a lot of color and whatnot into the shadows and now going the opposite direction we lost a lot of color in the shadows so let's bring that back right around the center kind of default how we had it take a look at that and I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit get a little more color um, in our shadows here about a two that looks pretty good so shadow smoothness um, obviously if we go all the way we start uh, basically clipping and losing a bunch of detail um, bring that back to the left so I do want to smooth it out a little bit but not a lot and for you at home when you're doing your own image you, you, you just can't take these numbers and apply it to your image and have it work it, every image is obviously different and you just really gotta kinda play with these to, to find your own settings for each image um, and again the best way to do this is to go to the extremes as I'm doing right here on the shadows clipping see the effect it has and then kinda determine how much of that you want um, so in this particular case with the shadows clipping I'm actually uh, gonna stop there so we're gonna go ahead and process this image and it's processing here we'll take a little pause and our image is done so we're gonna go ahead and save this image of course uh, so we'll go to file save as and we're gonna save this to our Photoshop folder our PS folder where we've been saving um, all the images out of uh, Photomatics so let's find this folder here in the one there we go and scroll to the bottom and there's our PS folder so we're gonna open that up and this is where we're gonna save it now I'm gonna go ahead and rename it you can see we've got a couple images there one's a JPEG one's a TIFF so I'm gonna leave the tone mapped at the end of this uh, that way we know this is the tone map version versus the other one we'll save that as a 16-bit since this is a HDR or a tone mapped image as opposed to the 8-bit which I do for the exposure fusion we'll go ahead and save that we can go ahead and close this image up as, uh, as soon as that saves there there we go and we'll go back to our PS folder here our Photoshop folder open that up and now we have the tone map version there we'll take a preview and you can see it's nice and deep and we've got a lot of details um, so that looks pretty good and just for reference um, I'll go ahead and show you the exposure fusion version and you can see it's not quite as nice the the tone mapping is always nice uh, you get a lot more deep details and a lot more depth there you go you can see that again so uh, there is a difference between the two but both have their purpose so that's gonna do it for tone mapping and we'll see you in the next video